Hey everyone, it's Aleem here. In this video, we're going to be walking through question 11-26. Weschler Company produces three products, the A130, the B324, and the C587. All three products use the same direct material, BRAC. It's kind of fun to say. Unit data for the three products are as follows. Selling price for the A130 is $252, the selling price for the B324 is $168, and then for the C587 we're looking at $210. Our direct material and labor costs are as shown, and then the quantity of BRAC per unit is 8 pounds, 5 pounds, and 3 pounds. Demand for the products far exceeds the direct materials available to produce the products. So here what they're telling us is that direct materials, direct materials are going to be a constrained resource, and when we're faced with a constrained resource, we don't optimize the product that has the highest revenue. We don't go for the highest contribution margin, but instead we look at the highest contribution margin per constrained resource. So BRAC costs $9 a pound and a maximum of 5,000 pounds is available each month. Weschler must produce a minimum of 200 units of each product. So here they've given you a minimum constraint as well as a maximum constraint of the pounds available of BRAC. What we're asked to do is to find out, one, how many units of product A, B, and C should Weschler produce, and then what is the maximum amount Weschler would be willing to pay for another 1,200 pounds of BRAC. This is the solution for question 11-26. The first thing you should do when faced with a product mix decision is to work out the contribution margin for each of the products. And here we see product A has a $96 contribution margin, product B has a $42 contribution margin, and product C has a $63 contribution margin. Uh, we also are told in the question that the pounds of BRAC per unit are 8, 5, and 3, and because we have a constraint around the number of pounds of BRAC available, we should work out the contribution margin per pound of BRAC. Now while it looks like A has a $96 contribution margin, we won't favor A in this case because it is not the one that makes the best use of BRAC. And in fact, product C has a much, much better use of BRAC. So product C gives us a contribution margin per pound of $21. And as a result, we will optimize making product C whenever possible. First things first, we have to satisfy the minimum requirements. And in this case, it tells us that the pounds required per unit are 8, 5, and 3 respectively. Uh, times the 200 minimum units, we get 1,600 pounds of BRAC, 1,000 pounds of BRAC, and 600 pounds of BRAC. So from the 5,000 pounds we started with, we subtract the 3,200 pounds we need to make the minimum production, giving us the remaining pounds of 1,800 pounds. Now in this case, what we're going to do then is put all of our emphasis now on making product C587. And if we do so, we get 200 units of A, 200 units of B, and then with that extra 1,800 pounds at 3 pounds per unit, we're able to make another 600 pounds of product C, giving us a total of 800 pounds. So again, with 1,800 pounds of BRAC available at 3 pounds per unit, we can make 600 units of C, and we get a total of 200, 200, and 800. Part 2 asks us, well, what is the most we'd be willing to pay for an additional pound of BRAC? If the selling price is $210, our variable labor and other costs were $120, and our contribution margin was $90. If it takes three pounds of BRAC to earn $90, the most we would be willing to pay per pound would be $30. So direct material cost per pound that Weschler could pay without the contribution margin becoming negative would be $30.